Hey guys, Clay here with Squatching Strategies, and today we're going squatching on a budget. Now, if you haven't seen my introduction video to this channel, you need to go check that out as well. So that way you get a general sense of direction where we're going with this series. Now, if you've ever seriously looked into squatching, or if you've actually been doing it yourself, you'll quickly realize that it can become fairly expensive pretty fast. So we're going to explore how to come up with a potentially very effective squatching strategy using items that I guarantee you 90% of you have lying around your house or out in your garage and you can set it all up for less than $100. Now the first thing we need is a location. And personally, I like to focus on waterways like lakes, streams, rivers, and there's mainly two reasons for that. Number one, honestly, we don't know what they eat. There's theories that they eat fruits and berries. There's other theories that they eat deer, rabbit, hogs, and other animals. But simple fact of the matter is, we don't know for sure. But there's one thing I do know, and that is if they're a flesh and blood creature, they have to drink water. Not to mention, if they do eat other animals, their prey has to drink water as well. The second reason I like to focus on waterways is that we also don't know if they're migratory or if they're territorial. And who knows, there might be some in one part of the country or world that are migratory, and there might be some in another area that are territorial. We just don't know. But if the ones in my area are territorial, then I believe the real estate around the waterways is going to be the most valuable to them. And maybe they'll be more willing to come in, check it out, see what's going on in order to defend their territory. So we're going to be heading down to Huntsville, Texas, which is just northwest of the Sam Houston National Forest. And literally right across I-45 from the Sam Houston National Forest is the Huntsville State Park, which has a small lake called Lake Raven. Now on the east side of the lake is a campground along with Little Chinkaping Creek, which runs into the bay there. There are some walking trails along that side, but they kind of dwindle down once you get south of that creek. Now, I will be carrying a bit of equipment, so I'm not going to be going too far. So we're going to be focusing our location search just south of where the creek hits the bay and along the southeast edge of the lake where the thick forest area is. In future episodes, we'll be using other techniques to get our gear to further distances without having to lug it along, but this method will do for now. Now that we have our location, on to the lure. Now, some of the lures we cover might be a little controversial, and I thought about it for a long time, and I came to the conclusion that, hey, if they potentially work, and they don't harm Sasquatch, and they don't disturb their environment, then why not share them? Why not try them out? Well, we're using one of those today, but it's probably my second favorite configuration for a setup, and I'm gonna show you how to do it while squatching on a budget. All right, a couple items we're gonna need for our setup. A baby car seat along with a baby doll and at least one baby blanket which I literally got all this at the thrift store for less than 15 bucks. We're also going to need a couple of clips to make sure the blankets are held in place and a tape recorder that has the ability to record the cassette tapes. Now you're also going to need a blank cassette preferably one that has a total of 120 minutes which would be an hour on each side. Now in the future we're going to be using digital recordings but since we're squatching on a budget on this episode we're going to keep it old school. Now you will need a way to record video, but you don't have to spend a lot. I bought this Jolt Duo 360 camera off Facebook for 40 bucks. has a lens on each side, records in 360 degrees, and then with the help of software, displays it in a 3D virtual world for you to view. So it doesn't matter which angle something approaches from, it's going to get caught on camera. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to YouTube or any other website that we can obtain sample recordings of baby crying. And we're going to make an hour-long cassette tape of recording of alternating crying and silence. That way, if you're recording audio as well as video, then you have some dead silence to really be able to pick up those minute sounds off in the distance. All right, then here's the final setup we're going to create out in the field. We got the 360 camera on top. We got the baby in the carriage with the speaker pointing forward. We have the baby blanket draped over the top, held down by the clamps, and that kind of serves as a dual purpose here. If you only have a directional camera pointing forward, then if you want to see what's in the baby carriage, you have to approach from the front and you get caught on camera. But the other purpose it serves is it focuses the sound in the direction that we want it to go. Hey guys, Clay here, and this is my girl Simone. Hi YouTube. <laughs> We're leaving the big city on our way to our first recorded squatching trip. So we've got about a four and a half, five hour drive ahead of us, but hey, gotta do what you gotta do. So uh, we'll see you on the other side. Bye YouTube. Huntsville State Park.
Now, I absolutely love this area of Texas. In fact, when I was a little kid, I grew up in a little town called Trinity about 20 minutes from here. Beautiful countryside. But I do not miss the humidity one single bit. Mm-mm. And just scoping out the opposite side of the shore over there. Now, if you want a little trick to record a long distance but don't want to zoom in with your phone or camera and make it all pixelated, just stick your lens up to binoculars and you got your recording at a long distance. And strolling down the trails, scoping out a spot to place my setup. Now, luckily they were doing a forest burn this week, so the trails up ahead were closed off and I didn't have to worry about too many people being in the area, stumbling across my baby carriage, which was really helpful because you have to be really careful using this setup. The last thing you want is somebody getting hurt trying to rescue a fake baby out in the forest. And got me a pretty good spot, about 50 yards away from the lake. I don't want to be right on the shoreline because I got the 360 degree camera. No sense in just filming water. And we're going to point the baby carriage down the shoreline. That way if anything's in the area, it'll come check it out. But it also keeps the noise away from the trails. Alright. Got it all set up here. Got the 360 cam on top. Got the baby with a little speaker behind. Got my partner in crime right here. <laughs> yeah. All right, now when you're approaching to retrieve your equipment, you pretty much kind of want to treat it like a crime scene. You want to film all the area around the carriage, or around whatever setup you have, because you never know, you might catch some footprints, some scat. Now, this ground is horrible for retaining footprints, so I'm not really expecting much from there. But you also want to do a pan around as well because you never know if something's watching from behind a tree or behind a bush and you might not see it right up front until you get home and go over your footage. So you never know. You always want to take footage. Now, I went through the 360 cam footage and just being an hour, hour and a half long, there really wasn't anything to include in this video. But also, if you understand 360 cameras, you'll realize I can't incorporate that footage into this video anyways. But to keep you from being disappointed, I included a second part in this video, and that is how to incorporate this setup with the cheapest time delay there is in order to set it off any time of night you want in order to obtain audio recordings. The majority consensus is that these creatures are nocturnal and are most active at night anyway, so this is actually the part of the trip that I was looking most forward to. So without further ado, let's do it. Now you will need just a simple wall clock, which I got this for $1.99 at, you guessed it, the thrift shop. Now some additional items that we're going to need. We need an extension cord for some wiring, a way to strip the wires. And like I said, we're keeping a ghetto this episode, so I'm just looking around the house, looking for items that I can use to improvise. Went through my toolbox and found this little L hinge, I guess you would call it, along with the base. We're going to need one nail, along with the batteries that go in the cassette player. Also some super glue, electrical tape, duct tape, a little piece of paper or cardboard cut out in a circle that is something that's non-conductive of electricity, and also of course a soldering tool. This there we go. Now we're gonna jerry-rig the crap out of this thing. So once you've taken off the cover, we're gonna cut away any decorative paper or anything that's non-essential and we're going to break it down to the bare bones of the the clock itself and of course i got my trusty squatching partner here slash electronic advisor to make sure i'm doing everything right and not screwing the project up looks like she's got everything under control now if your wall clock was any way similar to mine it had the actual hour markings on the decorative piece of paper that we cut away so before you get started, you want to take a permanent marker or some way of marking the notches in there and mark the hour hands around the edge. That way you don't get disoriented and you know where to set your nail and orient the time. And then we're going to cut away the minute and the second hand because we don't give a crap about those. They're not important. They'll just get in our way. Now this is one of the most critical aspects because we have to take the base of the hinge and super glue it to the middle of the clock. But we have to orient it to where when we attach the actual L hinge, the pivot point will be directly in the center of the clock. And of course, we want it to go off at 2 o'clock in the morning, so I need to make sure it rotates all the way around to the 2 o'clock point. Once you have it all lined up, then you can actually glue the hinge to the base. But you got to be quick and careful because that super glue ain't no joke. We want to super glue the base of the nail to whatever time you want the recording to start going off. And then of course, you got to make sure the hinge actually will go around and touch the nail itself.
We need a way for the hour hand to push the hinge around its axis and make a connection with the nail. So what I did was I just cut a little piece of extension cord, super glued it to the hinge to where it hangs down, and that way the hour hand will push it along as time goes by. Now, especially when you're innovating straight from scratch, you definitely want to test out your project periodically throughout the process, make sure everything's lined up, wind up the clock, make sure the hour hand pushes up against the plastic, rotates the hinge around, makes the connection with the nail, and now that we've had a successful test in this part, we're ready to rock and roll. Alright, so the next step is we got to cut some lengths of the wire from the extension cord, strip the ends, twist the ends together, because pretty much the idea is we're wanting this clock to act as kind of like a poor man's time relay, to where it just interrupts the electricity from the batteries and the cassette tape, and only makes the connection at the specific time of night or day that we're wanting it to happen. Take one of your wires with the stripped end, send it through the hole at the base of the hinge, and then twist it off, and you definitely want to make sure there's a good connection between the two, so solder that puppy together. The last thing you want is that thing flopping around on you and messing things up. Now after you solder the other wire to the base of the nail to make sure there's a good connection there, then you're ready to get two little snippets of wire, and we're going to solder it to the ends of two separate batteries. One to the positive end of one battery, and one to the negative end of the other battery. So now we're ready to rig the cassette player, so we're going to put the batteries in like you normally would, but the two batteries that you have the wires soldered to the ends of, you're going to put those back to back, and then you're going to take the little piece of paper or cardboard or whatever you have to disrupt the connection, and you're going to put that in between the batteries so the ends actually aren't touching. Slap some duct tape over the back of the batteries, put in our nifty little cassette tape, you're going to press the play button, connect the wires, twist them together, and then we're ready to do our test. I'm going to connect this, and you should see a little light come on, as well as hear the baby crying. Now you will want some type of audio recorder, preferably with a shotgun mic, but even one of those old school lecture hall recorders will do if that's all you got to work with. And for the final setup, we're going to take the recorder, wrap it up in a plastic bag, that way it protects it from moisture or rain or anything else that happens overnight. But you want to leave the shotgun mic out, that way you can put it underneath the blanket, but have the shotgun mic hanging out in front, pointed forward towards the opening. That way, if anything approaches from the front to see what's in the baby carriage, you can catch footprints, grunts, any other vocals, what have you. All right, well, here we are, <laughs> trekking through the wilderness, off trail, trying to get to, to my location. But here's pretty much where we're going through. It's not too bad. But, uh, got the, the baby carriage. Of course, I got the bear spray as well. Got to have that. Got Simone back there with the rest of the gear. <laughs> but, anyways, we'll see you in a bit. All right, well, I'm right near the bay area that I wanted to come. In fact, the bay is just right on the other side of those bushes, maybe, I don't know, 50 yards or so. So I wanted to walk around, you know, see if I could see any uh you know signs maybe some tree structures or or anything and uh this is kind of what i found right here right by the bay you know this huge tree bend let me show you how enormous this thing is Why not? that's how big this tree is and it goes up and over and i don't know but it's a strange way for a tree to grow. And then also, just right here by it, straight ahead, another enormous one. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this up right here in between these two. And then also you got this one overhead, it's kind of right in the middle of them, so maybe I'll just set it up right here. Nice little clearing area, set up right in the middle of these three tree structures. Imagine that, three of them. So here's the, here's the final setup I got. Got the speaker back there along with the clock, which she's a ticking. Got that. I got kitty blanket draped all around. Held together by clips so it doesn't blow away. But I have it all covered, that way if you wanna see what's in there, you gotta, approach from that angle right there 
And that's exactly where I got my shotgun mic pointed. All right, it's about seven o'clock in the morning. Going to retrieve my uh, baby carriage and, and microphone and everything. Hopefully nothing happened to it overnight, but uh, I guess we'll see. Now, because we were using the tape recording method, and like I said, it's just about an hour at length, I went through the audio as well as the 360 cam footage, and I didn't really notice anything out of the ordinary. And I refuse to put boring or useless footage in these videos. I just have too much other content to include. Now, once we get enough people following and willing to help out, I'm thinking about posting the audio and video footage online separately as a whole. Because if there's one thing I've learned about the Bigfoot community, they are very detailed and very patient when combing through footage and evidence. They'll find things you never dreamed you would have noticed on your own. And that would free up my time to make more videos like this rather than combing through audio and video footage. Also, there's a lot of people that are really interested in the subject but can't really get out and do squatching themselves, whether it be a physical disability or what have you. And sifting through evidence brings them joy and gives them a way to help out the community. However, I do have one video to include. This is that evening we got back after being gone for two days. I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you missed it so much. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Now, I will try to put out videos as often as possible, but like I said, I work full time. Not to mention, other than the intro to this channel, this is actually my first YouTube video, first time I've ever touched any type of video editing or audio editing or photo editing or anything. So this episode is a little rough around the edges, but trust me, it'll get better. Now, I probably won't be doing this very often, but I do want to give two shout outs in this video. Number one, Carrie Arnold and Linda Arnold from Bigfoot Odyssey. Carrie, you inspired me to take action and actually launch this channel. I've thought about it for a while, but seeing you bring the Bigfoot community together the way you have, made me realize that now is the time for growth as a whole within this group. It's kind of in its adolescent stage at the moment, but I truly believe it's about to hit a growth spurt. And I'm really excited to see what we're all able to accomplish together. So Carrie, keep up the good work, big guy. Second shout out goes to Scott Owens from Bigfoot Explorer. Scott, you've been extremely helpful getting back with me concerning my tech questions. Appreciate you, bud. Brilliant guy, by the way. If you haven't checked out his channel or website, definitely go do that. Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed the video. And to make sure you don't miss my next video or subsequent videos, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell as well as the like button. And as always, feel free to leave comments in the comment section. See you next time.